it's about the pancreas. Ladies and gentlemen, my lecture time is already uh, over, so I try to make it short. But I will try to come to the very important points because you want to know what is the standard of care regarding pancreatic cancer treatment. So why we speak about the pancreas, why we speak about pancreatic cancer, you see on this slide. So far, you have dealt with prostate cancer, breast cancer, uh, colon cancer, and lung cancer. But pancreatic cancer becomes very important. As you can see on this slide, the number two mortality in cancer in 2030 will be pancreatic cancer. The number two, it's no longer the others, as you can see on this slide. So therefore, we have to concentrate also on the treatment of pancreatic cancer. Now, what happened during the last uh, 30 years? If you look at the, at the left side of the slide, then you see the five-year survival in pancreatic cancer in 1989 was 5% after treatment, after surgery. So it was very low. More recent data in uh, 2018 show that after treatment, i.e. surgery plus chemotherapy, the five-year survival has come up to 50% and more. So this is 10 times what it was in 1989. And here you see the evolution. And here you also see the future. Pancreatic cancer in the future can also be tackled very well. At this moment, the standard of care for pancreatic cancer is surgery plus adjuvant chemotherapy. This is the standard of care. Let's see whether this will change. Now, the first article about adjuvant uh, treatment in pancreatic cancer is from 1985. It was about 43 patients randomized into surgery alone versus adjuvant radiochemotherapy. And the survival for the patients was improved by adjuvant radiochemotherapy. So this was also only a very little trial, a very small trial, but there was some indication that surgery of pancreatic cancer can be improved by additional radiochemotherapy. Now in 1992, um, together with Claudio Bassi from Italy, Hans Pega from Ulm, and John Neoptolemos from Liverpool, we founded ESPAC, the European Study Group for Pancreatic Cancer. Do not forget, ladies and gentlemen, this is four surgeons who have based the future of chemotherapy in pancreatic cancer. Four surgeons, not medical oncologists. And we were uh, intending to improve pancreatic cancer survival. And I have to say that we were able to show for the first time, this is this article in the New England Journal, 2004, where we had 600 patients randomized in 11 European countries, and where we could show that adjuvant chemotherapy was improving the survival after surgery for pancreatic cancer. Unfortunately, we could also show that adjuvant chemoradiotherapy, adjuvant chemoradiotherapy, was not helpful for these patients. So from this date on, the standard of care in pancreatic cancer is surgery plus adjuvant treatment. This ESPAC study group is kind of a success study, ladies and gentlemen. We have done many multicentric randomized controlled trials regarding pancreatic cancer. This is, for example, ESPAC-3 where we randomized 1,100 patients because that time in 2010, gemcitabine was the magic drug to treat pancreatic cancer. It was really magic. Everybody spoke about gemcitabine. 
In fact, we were not, so we were not convinced that gemcitabine is better than simple 5-FU to improve the survival. Everybody was against because uh, gemcitabine was magic. So we run this trial, and as you can see, the overall survival and the progression-free survival was exactly the same whether you had given five of you, very cheap, very simple, or gemcitabine uh, in the adjuvant fashion. So you can see how important randomized control trials are. I think you know very well about. Just another question that was open is adjuvant chemotherapy also helpful in ampullary and periampullary cancers. We did this trial here published in JAMA 2012 and the answer was yes. We can improve the survival uh, also in periampullary cancer by chemotherapy. The next question was what is the optimal duration and the optimal time to start chemotherapy after surgery? So we, we were running this trial here, published in JCO 2013, and uh, we randomized close to 1,000 patients to uh, answer this question. And the answer is that patients take the best advantage from adjuvant chemotherapy if they complete six cycles, and if they start the chemotherapy not earlier than 12 weeks after surgery. 12 weeks after surgery, start chemotherapy and complete six cycles. This is this curve here. You, you see this is the best survival uh, after surgery. Okay, our next trial was then SPAC4, recently published in the Lancet, where we could show, uh, we randomized again 700 patients, where we could show that um, gemcitabine plus capecitabine is improving the survival as against gemcitabine alone. So we had a 28 median, 28 months median survival time after gemcitabine plus capecitabine versus 25 months when you only apply gemcitabine. So this was another step into the right direction. And as you can see here, this is the patients, the red curve here, the red survival curve here, is the patients that completed all G gemcitabine, capecitabine, adjuvant treatment cycles. They reach a 40 months median survival and a 40% five year survival. So this was really impressive as compared to earlier times. So if you see the whole ESPAC story, then we started in the year 2000 with a uh, median survival, with a five-year overall survival of 8%. This was in 2000. And then what we recently published is the 29% um, uh, five-year survival uh, when you um, add gemcitabine and capecitabine to surgery. Now, more interestingly is what has been published recently in the New England Journal from another group, the so-called ProDiage group, which is a combination of French oncologists with Canadian oncologists. They were giving folfirinox in the adjuvant fashion, and they had very interesting survival data, as you can see here. This is the adjuvant Volfirinox versus adjuvant gemcitabine. And these authors reach a 54 median months overall survival after adjuvant Volfirinox, which is at this moment the best that we have in our hands. So our standard of care now is surgery plus adjuvant uh, Folfirinox treatment. Unfortunately, and this is important for the medical oncologists in this room, the adjuvant treatment with 
Nap Pakitaksel was completely disappointing. As you can see here, this is the big trial that has been carried out in the United States. The leader was Margaret Tempero. They did uh, adjuvant Nap Pakitaksel in uh, pancreatic cancer and the survival was uh, the same as compared to gemcitabine alone. So <clears throat> Nap Pakitaksel uh, in the adjuvant fashion for pancreatic cancer treatment is uh, buried, ladies and gentlemen. Now, <clears throat> we are going to the question of neoadjuvant trial, which is very controversial. I just can give you some of the data. The neoadjuvant trial problems is what kind of treatment we should use. Should we take Holfirinox or GEMCAP? Should we use radiation or other kind of protocol? The answer is we don't know. Resectable pancreatic cancer, resectable pancreatic cancer. So what you can resect, there is no role for neoadjuvant treatment. This comes out from all trials that have been done in resectable pancreatic cancer. It should be surgery plus adjuvant treatment. <coughs> to show you some of the data, regarding resectable pancreatic cancer. This is a recent paper in JAMA Oncology and uh, 147 patients were randomized into surgery versus neoadjuvant plus surgery. Remember, 140 patients uh, were randomized and 73 were resected. So you can see the problem of neoadjuvant treatment you lose a lot of patients because of toxicity, because of uh, the growing of the cancer during neoadjuvant treatment. So only half of the patients were resected. And the big problem is that all these patients had, had a chance because it was resectable. So all these patients had a chance for resection that was forgiven with the neoadjuvant treatment. Remember this also in the future. Okay, and then um, what also comes out from this trial is that the median uh, survival was 23 months after neoadjuvant treatment, but please compare SPAC4 median survival uh, 30 months and pro dietch median survival 54 months. So if we speak about neoadjuvant, then you have to compare the data with the surgery plus adjuvant treatment. These data are much better than what has been published regarding neoadjuvant. Now when we go to borderline resectable or advanced pancreatic cancer, then there is a clear role for neoadjuvant treatment, borderline or advanced. Yes, so there is some trials about borderline uh, resectable pancreatic cancer and neoadjuvant treatment. As you can see here, you see that in the neoadjuvant fashion, the patients had a better survival, but these were only 50 patients, so a very small uh, trial, and unfortunately, this article from Korea has major serious protocol violations. So this is just a little spotlight that neoadjuvant in borderline resectable pancreatic cancer is helpful. Now we have more. For example, this big randomized trial from the Netherlands, the so-called Priopank trial. They treated patients with borderline resectable in the neoadjuvant fashion with chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And ladies and gentlemen, very disappointing, very disappointing. As you can see here, there was no significant survival benefit for the patients undergoing neoadjuvant chemo radiotherapy. It was the same as surgery alone. Very disappointing. Now, SPAC-5, one of our own trials, by the way, we are just starting SPAC 6 and 7. But SPAC 5, we have recently published. This was a neoadjuvant trial for borderline resectable. You see we randomized in surgery 
versus Neo Adjuvant Gem Cup versus Neo Adjuvant Folfirinox versus Neo Adjuvant Chemo Radiotherapy. And uh, we have clear cut definitions for borderline, uh, which I don't go into detail. But uh, the result is that <coughs> the best survival data, what we can show from SPAC 5 is neo adjuvant um, Folfirinox plus surgery uh, delivers the best survival data. You can see here, this is this curve. And so there is another spotlight that neo adjuvant Folfirinox is improving the survival in borderline resectable patients. Now, neo adjuvant radiotherapy, is there a role in the future? This is a trial from the United States, 126 patients randomized for Folfirinox versus Folfirinox plus radiotherapy. And very disappointing, the uh, median survival was 30 months in neo adjuvant Folfirinox alone versus 17 months when you combine neo adjuvant Folfirinox with radiotherapy. So therefore, at this moment, there is no role for neo adjuvant radiotherapy at this moment. I think in the future, there might be a role for neo adjuvant radiotherapy when the radiotherapy becomes better regarding the technique. At this moment, there is no role for neo adjuvant radiotherapy. Now, I'm finishing up, ladies and gentlemen, um, with the question of should we give adjuvant treatment after neo adjuvant, adjuvant after neo adjuvant? As you can see here in JAMA Oncology, there was no benefit for the patients when you give additional adjuvant chemotherapy when the patient had had neo adjuvant. Uh, the exception is when the lymph nodes are positive in pancreatic cancer surgery, then it seems to be that adjuvant chemotherapy after neo adjuvant chemotherapy is helpful, but only in the group with node positive disease. This reminds us to colorectal cancer where we do adjuvant treatment when the lymph nodes were positive. So in summary, ladies and gentlemen, what is the standard of care in pancreatic cancer treatment at this moment in 2021? It is surgery plus adjuvant treatment. All the other measures are inferior. All the other measures are inferior. The standard of care is surgery plus adjuvant. In the future, I'm sure we will find out who will take advantage from neo-adjuvant. These are specific patient collectives, patient populations that we will define together with you. Thanks for your attention.